Last week, we introduced you to visionary artist Paul Lawfully and his plans for a time machine and a vegetable house grown from a single seed. This week, Lawfully discusses his masterpiece, Thanaton III, a painting he claims is alive. The painting depicts an extraterrestrial's exhortation to me explaining how to, one, link life to death in a continuous experience, two, utilize the resulting phanatonic energy to travel faster than the speed of light, turn mass into consciousness and back again, alter evolution at will, and exist simultaneously at every moment of time. Three, move the entire universe into the fifth dimensional realm and say when in history it is possible for this to happen. I have also received other information I cannot understand. Since this information was given to me directly, but not for me per se, it must be communicated to others, many of whom are better prepared than I to receive it. Accordingly, I was also shown how to make the painting into a psychotronic or consciousness mass interactive device, which is activated by approaching the painting, stretching out your arms, touching the upright hands, and staring into the eye. By doing this, new information will come to you through the active use of the divine proportion, which is the proportion of life connecting to death. Paul, this painting, Thanaton III, which you completed in 1989, is probably your most famous work. Why do you think that this piece has become so representative of your paintings? Well, I think it contains uh, most of the imagery that I've used and probably will continue to use. Uh, the Great Pyramid, things to do with uh, the near-death experience, UFOs, the images of aliens, my theories of history, and of course that it is participatory. When you say it's participatory, what do you mean? Well, it, uh, it essentially is a way <clears throat> in which you can um, use the imagery almost machine-like, but not quite and by touching it, by looking at it, uh, by projecting your own energy on it, it will respond to you. Well, in, in most of your work, you present schematics and plans for unbuilt devices, for living architecture like your vegetable house. But Thanaton III is different because, in this case, it's not a plan to build something. It is the thing itself. You, you claim that the painting is a psychoactive device. It's a, a way of achieving communication and I'm communicating with a higher dimensional realm. And it's really um, penetrating a surface. And uh, that's what's meant by portaling. I would say to go from, from the fourth to the fifth dimensional realm uh, you can penetrate by uh, a Mobius strip, you can penetrate by going through a surface, uh, but you don't want to rupture either yourself or, or the surface in the process. It's like in, in the movie where somebody comes out of the movie or you go into the movie and you are not destroyed in the process. That's, that's like passing uh, through a, a dimensional portal. It is kind of like taking money out of a bank machine when you're looking at a screen and you're called upon to touch the screen. You do know that uh, you can't go through the screen, but you do also know that there's something behind the screen that's organizing the experience that you have. This operates in basically the same way. Only in this case, the payoff is not money, but a type of knowledge, uh, a type of transformative knowledge, a knowledge which uh, will, will literally bring you for an instant in, in, into the fifth dimensional realm. It boils down to uh, you know, un understanding dimensionality in, uh, in a way that's not necessarily mathematical, uh, not necessarily religious, not necessarily philosophical, but has subsumed uh, all three.